Welcome to the second video of this mini-series about unit testing in Python. In this video, you're going to learn about subtests and also how to run some code before and after each test using the setup and teardown methods. So, let's actually run the test and recap what the problem was and how to fix it with subtests. I need to make the test uh, fail, so I'm just going to change something like here, like that, and here as well. Okay, so if we run the test, as you can see, you get a dot, which is for the uh, can drink uh, alcohol test, okay? And then the F, because the second test failed, which is the test grid person here. But as you can see, you just get one error, which is the first error that you get, this one. But you don't get this error, although here you have something wrong as well, you don't get it, so you, you never know if this was fine or not, okay? So, as we said in the previous video, it doesn't make sense to create two test methods just for this little like the j, uppercase j, lowercase j, okay? So to sort of differentiate the two assert equal calls, we can use subtests, which can be thought of as little tests within a bigger test, okay? So to add the subtest, you just need to use the context manager. So with subtest like that, and indent it here. And then again here with self.subtest. And then like that. So you've got one subtest. So this is the whole test, one subtest, two subtests, okay? And then here you can write a little title to differentiate them even further. Case J and lower case J like that, okay? So if we run that like that, as you can see now, you get finally two errors. So you get the dot for the can drink alcohol function because that test actually succeeded, but then now you get two. So you've got the first subtest, as you can see uppercase J and lowercase J. So these are one subtest, two subtests. And finally you get one line nine and one line 12. Okay, so basically, even though this subtest failed, this one was run anyway. Okay, and as you can see, you get two errors. Welcome to, welcome to two subtests and here two tests because you run the test grid person and the can drink alcohol test one so you've got two tests and you've got two failures because the two subtests failed okay let's actually add subtests to the can drink alcohol test can drink alcohol so you could do something like with self subtest and then like that and then with self subtest and then like that okay perfect so now we've got all of subtests and let's actually do something like this well no, well no, like that okay okay so let's actually save that and now both of them should work all right now everything is working just fine Perfect. So this is how you would use subtests, okay? Now let's say that you want to do something before each individual test is run. Maybe you need a specific variable in each test or you need to create an instance of a class to do something or create a file, database, or whatever, okay? You would need to repeat the same code over and over at the beginning of each test. So you would have to write something like instance uh, and then create instance, etc. And then down here, instance, Okay, so you would have to do that every time. And if you need to change something, you need to change it here and then you need to change it here, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and let's also say that you want to do some cleanup at the end of each test. Maybe you want to delete the file you created, et cetera, et cetera. You need to write the same piece of code at the end of each test, okay? So let's see how to do that without repeating code. Actually, before we do that, if you're enjoying the video, do me a favor and like it and leave a comment down below. It really helps the channel a lot. And also, if you don't want to miss the last video of this series and a lot more, subscribe to the channel as well. So, to do what I've just told you, you can use the setup and teardown methods, okay? So, up here, you can do something like def setup 
you pass self, and here the code to run before each test. Okay, in this case, I'm just going to print set up like that, but you could do something like self instance and then random class or something like that and uh, or you could do something like self uh, the variable something and then you could use these variables here you could do something like self dot instance etc etc okay so these are just to show you let's comment those out and also you can add the teardown method and this is the code that is going to run after every test before the next one is actually run. Okay. So in this case, I'm just printing teardown. Okay. Let's actually print something inside these tests so you can see. So this is create person and this is the can drink, something like that. Okay. And let's actually run the tests and see what we actually get so let's try that out okay so as you can see setup can drink tear down then the dot because that succeeded then set up again the setup for the grid person test grid person tear down and then the result like that okay of course these methods are valid only for the class uh, which they're methods of so if you have two test cases let's say that you've got another class here test example one these two are just used by test example that is quite obvious okay then you also have other two interesting class methods setup class that will run the code at the beginning of each test case okay so only once before all the tests and tear down class that will run the code at the end of the test case so after all the tests have been completed if you have let's say two classes that means that we have two test cases and if they both have the two methods set then python will run the setup class method of the first one then all the tests and then the tear down class method then the setup class method of the second class then the tests and then lastly the teardown class method of the second one okay let's see how to implement them so we need to go up here and we need to use the class method decorator class method like that then def set up class like that then we need to pass the cls parameter because being a class method they receive the class itself as the first parameter and then here what we want to do starting test case i don't know something like that and then same thing but tear down class cls print test ended something like that okay let's actually try to run it so actually keep that as you can see starting test case and then test case ended at the end just once once here and once here okay perfect as you can see everything works as expected let's actually delete all of these methods here because we don't need that and also the can drink and with person like that okay perfect so in the third and last part of this mini series we are going to talk about how to test for exceptions meaning if we get the exception we're expecting or not also we're going to talk about expected failures and skipping tests even conditionally so if the video is already out you should see it on the screen if not this other video is definitely interesting as well click on it and i'll see you there